everyone, and welcome to another episode of Code Blue, a weekly podcast dedicated to all things unexplained and unidentified, brought to you by BlueBook.tv. I am Thor, and thank you for listening. The topic of this episode, a new world awaits us, if we can take it. UFOs and national security have always been intertwined, but they have been kept separate and compartmentalized issues, one being lunacy, the other taken seriously, for decades. Their conflict were the very reason back in the 1950s that the US military decided to deny all of it, deliberately as a means to preserve a perception of a well-managed national security apparatus Because if you admit to something you don't understand, and it may or may not be hostile, how can you preserve a sense of control, social order, and governance? At least that was the advice of the Durant Report put forth by the Robertson panel back in 1953, led by Dr. Howard Robertson, a physicist and consultant to the CIA, and the director of the Department of Defense's Hostile Weapons Evaluation Group, appropriately. His committee advised the Department of Defense to completely debunk UFOs, discredit eyewitness accounts, and deny its reality whatsoever, for national security reasons, but then continue to study it as classified military secrets, compartmentalize such research, and when captured, reverse engineer their technology for greater understanding. That became the model and we are still living with the consequences. With the release of the seven-page report from the Office of the Director of National Intelligence on June 25, 2021, a new and compelling argument can be made that since we now recognize the UAP footage as real, which the report does state, and that these very same flying objects exhibit maneuvers at speed, change of direction, in defiance of gravity, means of propulsion, and g-forces not known to us, represent technology that supersedes anything known to the US military at the minimum. It means we, the nation, as well as the national security apparatus, have a potential threat leveled against us. Either our adversaries, other nations on Earth, have developed technology far beyond our own capabilities, or The other option would be, by the term adversary, the report leaves a window open to the possibility that an adversary can also mean not of this earth, pending further study. Either way, we can't ignore it, says the report between the lines. There have been so many secret programs, including Project Sign in 1948, led by Air Force General Nathan Twining, Project Grudge, a parallel project to sign, terminated in 1947. Project Blue Book, namesake of this channel, initially led by Captain Edward Rubbold and with J. Allen Hynek attached as a science advisor, which publicly investigated over 12,000 incidents between 1952 and 1969 with a small staff located at Wright-Patterson and the expressed conclusion that roughly 95% of the incidents were identifiable as either natural or human occurrences, and that roughly 5% of the investigated sightings, close to 700 or so, were, and I quote, incredible events described by credible witnesses, end quote. Then there was the Condon Report, a 965-page report resulting from a commissioned research by the Air Force out of University of Colorado titled Scientific Study of Unidentified Flying Objects, published by the New York Times Bannon Books in 1969, and by many, one of the most important disclosure documents ever published. The Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program operated between 2007 and 2012 on an official $22 million budget allocation, which was secured by Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, 
along with bipartisan interest from his colleague from Alaska, Senator Ted Stevens, who was a pilot during World War II and had reported on an encounter himself, along with Hawaii Senator Daniel Nochi. It was unclassified, but unpublished as well, until 2017, while Luis Elizondo directed. By 2012, ATIP somehow morphed into another unclassified yet unpublished program, the Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force, or UAPTF. Since his departure in October 2017, Elizondo has been an outspoken advocate of the reality of the UAP and is continually disparaged by the Pentagon for it. And it cannot be a coincidence that Elizondo's departure in October 2017 and the New York Times publication of the 2004 David Fravor Navy pilot incident published in December 2017 were so close in time. In parallel, and throughout multiple decades, the CIA's Office of Scientific Intelligence, Physics and Intelligence Division, initially led by A. Ray Gordon, as well as the Office of Naval Intelligence, have consistently gathered evidence, data and information, and studied unidentified flying objects and aerial phenomena for just as long. Based on testimony from Colonel Philip Corso and others, the government intelligence and defense apparatus is quote, just like a large corporation where different departments compete for resources and avoid sharing information, end quote. One can only speculate that a siloing of information into a multi-agency study and artifacts and intelligence gathering regarding the UAP phenomena, information guarded behind a veil of top secret national defense posture, has only prevented a comprehensive and intelligent scientific analysis. Dating back to the 1960s, there has also been a growing chorus mounting for a disclosure with a simple and understandable ask that all governments release what they have gathered on behalf of their peoples regarding UFOs and unexplained phenomena and simply lay it out, put it on the table Let people decide. Many believe this is the drive and the strive to get governments to talk and disclose. Countless presentations have been made to congressional and Senate committees on the subject. Inquiries have been made, all to a very meager avail. There's also the school of thought that a government disclosure will never happen, because if they did, They will be unleashing a wave of fear and uncertainty, a genie let loose out of a bottle that can never be put back, pointing to horrors of an uncertainty where a government fails its purpose and can no longer control societal order, unleashing an interplanetary Colombian exchange to disclose means to recognize that we're not the highest intelligence in the world, and just as one example, suddenly our history might perhaps be completely different than we thought, calling into question not just government authority, but religion, history, and the place of Homo sapiens sapiens in the order of evolution. NASA was advised as early as in the 1950s not to disclose findings regarding alien life for those very same reasons. So you see, historically, Societal, psychological, as well as military advices have all agreed to not disclose, not recognize, but deny, deny, deny. Our current predicament can be summed up with one word, fear. This fear echoes a sentiment put into words no better but by horror and science fiction author H.P. Lovecraft who said, and I quote carefully, The most merciful thing in the world, I think, is the inability of the human mind to correlate all of its content. We live on a placid island of ignorance in the midst of black seas of infinity, and it was not meant that we should voyage far. 
The sciences, each straining in its own direction, have hitherto harmed us little. But some day, the piecing together of the disassociated knowledge will open up such terrifying vistas of reality and of our frightful position therein, that we shall either go mad from the revelation or flee from the deadly light into the peace and safety of a new dark age. End quote. We are at a time today when science, technology, and media converging in a global dialogue of conscience where seemingly disassociated pieces of information prove themselves to be entangled, where we are finally beginning to associate knowledge and opening up vistas of reality and our position therein. We must now be brave and step forward through the Seagate portal of time because our time has come to stare into the abyss at not the darkness but the bright light that awaits us unafraid and move forward to journey into a future of truth and real reality. A new world awaits us if we can take it. You can watch or listen to this and other podcasts of the Code Blue series on bluebook.tv. Please check it out. It's free. This has been a Code Blue for all things unexplained and unidentified. Please subscribe and each day, let's show some compassion and kindness. I am Thor and thank you for listening. See you next time.